Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Untitled Reviews. This time around we're doing a bit of a comparison video that we're entitling Battle of the Basilisks. So this will be a comparison between Razer's two newest mice in their Basilisk line. The Basilisk X Hyperspeed on your left and the Basilisk Ultimate on their right. Now Razer's mice have proved popular in the community in the past but hopefully these will be no different. Now just as a bit of an introduction the Hyperspeed has a, a cost of $59.99. It seems a lot better priced than a lot of the competition uh, and does seem to pack a punch with a 16,000 DPI sensor and 450 hour battery life with Bluetooth. The one on your right, the Basilisk Ultimate, is nearly three times the price at $169.99 but this one does come bundled with additional charging dock and offers a lot more for the money on the surface with uh, Razer's renowned chroma backlighting, 11 programmable buttons, uh, customizable scroll wheel resistance and 20,000 DPI sensor. That one specifically is designed to compete with the likes of Logitech's G502 Lightspeed uh, that we've covered here on the channel and rated very highly, so it's got some stiff competition at that. So, now we've actually got the mice outside of the box, let's take a look at them in more detail. As I say, on your left is the Basilisk X Hyperspeed and on the right is the Basilisk Ultimate. Now, both of them are made of of plastic as you can see uh, and both come with these patterned rubber grips on the side which are, are really rather comfortable and offset the, the matte black plastic as well as this kind of glossy little stripe here and that's also on the side as well like as well as the glossy buttons. Uh, the Hyperspeed offers um, yeah, six programmable buttons so you've got the one on the top there, the two on the side, the actual two mouse buttons here in the, the scroll wheel middle click as well compared to 11 on the Basilisk Ultimate, so you've got scroll wheel which has left and right kind of scroll as well as well as a kind of adjustable DPI but that's up and down so it's not just pressing it continuously you've got the two mouse buttons on the side as well as one little button down there the uh, Hyperspeed offers dual connectivity as mentioned on the box so on the bottom here we've got a switch between 2.4 gigahertz receiver that you get in the box as well as a Bluetooth connection which uh, offers a longer battery life. The Ultimate doesn't have that, unfortunately, so there's a bit of a, a bit of a downfall there. Both of them, unlike some of the competition, unfortunately, this is a bit of a, a kind of pet peeve of mine, I don't have additional weights in them or uh, kind of side panels. They are designed for, for people with bigger hands. They're quite big mice anyway, so they might not be suited to those with smaller hands. Some of the competition do offer weight, side panels, kind of either or. Logitech certainly offered uh, weights uh, that you could put in the bottom of the G502 Lightspeed that we covered earlier on uh, earlier on in the year on the channel. Uh, and that does make them feel quite light. I mean, the, the hyperspeed is alleviated by the fact that it's it's powered by one AA battery that gets bundled in the box. So I've just taken out a shot a minute to take the cover off. Uh, as you can see, there is a, a battery in there that gets supplied in the box, and it's a pretty good one as well. It's an Energizer Ultimate AA, so that really helps out. But that only alleviates the weight problem very slightly. The Ultimate doesn't come uh, with that. Uh, it, it's powered by either the micro USB cable that gets bundled in the box. Uh, it's 1.8 meter or six foot kind of braided cable. It's a really nice cable actually, so good job for Razer for that. Uh, and this particular iteration did come bundled with a kind of charging dock uh, and this little strip round here is also chroma enabled, so it's chargeable either on that or on the um, the micro USB, which does render the dock a little useless, perhaps uh, to some. But it's a nice little thing to have anyway, I suppose. Uh, and so overall design, they are pretty similar. They are in the same line after all. But the ultimate does have a few more features that should make it a better mouse in the long run. Right. So how did they actually perform in? Uh, kind of testing then on various games. Now, this was really a focus on the Razer's Focus Plus sensor that comes in both of these mice and their hyperspeed connection offered by the 2.4 gigahertz receivers that came in both of the respective boxes of these mice that offer latency-free browsing and gaming. So we found that to be absolutely true. There is seamless uh, transitioning between kind of there's no difference between it being wired or wireless if you really want to run some full-on tests on it you might find a difference but just to the general user like ourselves there wasn't much of a difference both mice are presented with adjustable dpi levels from the low levels of 800 
uh, up to 16,000 on the Basilisk Hyperspeed uh, and 20,000 on the Ultimate. That is a lot of DPI, to be brutally honest. Uh, and 16,000 for 59.99 is an absolutely amazing thing to be able to say because a lot of the competition have kind of maybe half that or maybe 12,000 if you're lucky. So for Razer to come out and offer a 16,000 DPI wireless mouse for that price really blew our minds, certainly. Both of them claim to have a 25% faster than any other sensor on the market like Logitech's Hero, which was, for a time, the world's fastest sensor at 12,000 DPI at that time. But just from a few hours of usage, I'm a bit I'm a bit dubious about it. Basically, it did just feel like it was uh, kind of sensitivity had been increased. If I'm honest, although there is a certainly a marked difference between the sixteen thousand and twenty thousand DPI when gaming on first person shooters, for instance, so your ability to swing around to shoot enemies or take hostages or stuff like that or defuse bombs, there is a, a marked difference there, and it's all the welcome for it. I will say that there was a bit of a learning curve and a bit of a and there might be if you're not used to such high DPI mice. It does take a bit of getting used to, but once you're there, it's an utterly seamless connection. Now, one thing to note about performance is battery life. The Basilisk X Hyperspeed, without the lighting, obviously it doesn't have that involved, offers 285 hours on the 2.4 gigahertz receiver or 450 hours on Bluetooth, which is a whole kind of four times better than the Ultima, which you can see rolling through its lighting settings at the minute which offers up to 100 hours. Uh, and so that's quite an interesting thing to note. You might be charging, in fact, no, you will be charging the Ultimate a lot more because the only thing that needs changing in the Basilisk X Hyperspeed is its AA battery, and you won't be changing that for half as long. Uh, as we mentioned before, the Ultimate does have that charging dot that we showed in the last section with its six foot braided micro USB cable. Interesting thing to note about that as well is it's also Chroma enabled, so will work in conjunction on Razer's Synapse software. And certainly another thing to note that the cheaper mouse has over the more expensive one is the, the Basilisk X Hyperspeed's on-the-fly connectivity between 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth was absolutely seamless and it's really something to be proud of. So, now we've actually got the kind of uh, Basilisk Ultimate plugged into the Razer Synapse software, this section is gonna kind of work. So we're gonna show you the Ultimate mainly and then link it back to the hyperspeed where it's relevant. So these first couple of bits, where we're going to be talking about what we can do, uh, applies to both mice, although bear in mind that the Basilisk Ultimate that we're showing off here does have uh, more programmable buttons, uh, 11 to be exact. So say, let's take the right click for instance, we can do all this manner of function. There, there is a lot to be fair. So you can change its default key, uh, for instance, uh, and bind it to a particular uh, keyboard function. So pretty much any key on your keyboard can be bound to a single mouse button, as well as a myriad of mouse functions as well. So say you wanted double click to be on that kind of sensitivity up button. You could have that, for instance. You can change the, the DPI up and down buttons as well, have it on the fly changing as well, as opposed to just kind of up and down individually. Macros can be changed as well. Uh, there's also this inter-device function which requires two or more Synapse enabled devices. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't had the ability to test that. Uh, you can switch between the five onboard profiles that the, the Basilisk Ultimate offers, which is quite cool. Lighting can be can be switched as well. That works in conjunction with uh, Razer, Razer's Chroma Studio, which we'll come on to later. The Hypershift function uh, kind of un is common amongst Razer products uh, that use Synapse. Uh, and unlocks double the amount of kind of double the layers of programming that you would have had normally. So you'd assign, say, I don't know, sensitivity stage up to be your hypershift button. You could hold that down and in conjunction with any other keys, unlock another kind of 10 uh, programming functions, which brings your total to 21, which seems quite insane, to be honest. Um, you can also launch programs, in individual websites as well as using kind of the typical multimedia function, so you can volume down, volume up, mute, play, pause, skip tracks. There's your typical window shortcuts of launching the calculators, notepads, task manager, task manager particularly useful for me personally, uh, as well as text functions, and to just disable that button completely. Now moving on to the performance section, uh, the number of kind of DPI can change here, so you can, as well as changing the five stages 
uh, intermittently. So say we wanted to change stage three up to 6,000, as you can see, you can do that quite easily using the slider there. Uh, and as well as doing that, you can change the number of stages from the maximum amount of five down to two. So if we change it down to two, we can have, say, 5,350 and 20,000 so you can just switch between two and five which seems quite nice to be able to as well as giving you a handy shortcut to the Windows mouse properties. Now the next couple of or the next bit especially by way of lighting is quite specific to the the Basilisk Ultimate that we're showing here. Uh, so the the brightness can be changed all the way from zero to 100 uh, which is quite useful I and mean, we've got it on the the 100 setting so the maximum it can be although that will have a bit of an effect on your battery life obviously that's up to 100 hours uh, without um, lighting enabled. You can also choose when to switch off the lighting, so when your display is turned off or when your computer's idle, so it will go to sleep in conjunction with when your PC does, or rather the monitor does. And now the lighting effects itself, using top to bottom we've got the audio meter, uh, which we'll come on to later. The typical breathing function, so it will slowly pulsate, say green and then go off uh, to kind of nothing uh, and that can also be changed to be randomized uh, if you so wish it's also worth noting that these colors do go in conjunction with the dock that's on the right there that is uh, contained as part of this bundle and that's also chroma enabled as well uh, you've also got it to reactive so it will work with kind of basic key pressure so you'll press it and it will flash a different color so that's got a cool little function uh, so that color can be changed and how long it does it for uh, spectrum cycling is what we've had it on for a lot of the video so it will just go between kind of colors and scroll through them quite nicely in a kind of rainbow type way static obviously is well one static color so at this moment it raises signature green and then you've got the, the wave setting so it will as we've had it on before just wave between the colors quite quickly as well that can go up or down the mouth and on the side it does show it going quite nicely as well so that's true RGB functionalities for you there. One thing that is quite nice about Razer's Synapse software that we well I haven't seen before anyway is that you can again deliver even more accurate tracking than you would have done normally so a higher level of precision using uh, basically this to calibrate the surface that you're on that will either work in conjunction with one of Razer's gaming services or your own mouse mat so you get that real maximum level of precision which is really nice and there's also the kind of power option so when the mouse will go into sleep mode after being idle for a certain amount of minutes or entering low power mode as well so it could have low power mode at say 30 percent or you can go down in increments or down and up in increments of five you can also have different profiles for different i suppose desktops and things or games as well have different profiles for lighting or for all sorts of things Razer Connect allows you to, to integrate it with games and applications and there's also the Chroma Workshop here that allows you to link it to apps, games that are created by the community, by the looks of things. Similar to Logitech's G-Hub in that regard. And then you come onto the, the minefield of Chroma Studio uh, which allows you to, to change pretty much anything about this mouse. I mean, when we said about endless customization earlier on in this review, it's, it's pretty clear that there's you can do absolutely anything with this. It's absolutely mental. Visualizer will leave for a second. You can connect to kind of the Philips Hue lighting as well if you've got any of those. So your your RGB kind of goes further than beyond your office. Uh, the macro customization has its own tab for more in-depth stuff. And there's also a customization with nano leaf um, devices as well. Now the visualizer is something we've left um, because we wanted to let it kind of speak for itself. So, in conclusion then, what do we think? Well, taking the Basilisk X Hyperspeed, first of all, it's rather competitively priced at $59.99, especially given the, the 16,000 DPI that you get for that, which is absolutely plentiful. 
The hyperspeed wireless connection works well and is seamless as well as the dual connectivity between the receiver and the Bluetooth. And Razer always excel on their Synapse 3 software so you're in safe hands when it comes to that. If you're looking for something that costs a, a fair bit more money, the Basilisk Ultimate is great as long as you can pay for it. It beats Logitech by way of its software uh, with Synapse 3 excelling G-Hub by a fair amount. Although the Basilisk Ultimate does ultimately fall down on its physical customization and quite high markup as well. So that's something to bear in mind if you're thinking of purchasing those. Uh, and on the subject of, of purchasing those, it's quite a good segue there. Um, we've got, uh, we'll leave our Amazon uh, associate links down in the description so that you can purchase either or um, of these mice if you're happy with this review and whether you like them or not. So it's a win-win. You get a pretty damn good mouse and support the channel here as well. And all that remains for to be said is like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed the video.